Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at the geospatial coordination between Tecla structures and Autodesk Revit. In the world of BIM, we quite often have to share models with dissimilar software products such as Tecla or Revit. Typical workflows might involve taking an architectural model or an MEP model from Revit into Tecla structures to produce some steel details. Those steel details might then want to be shared back with the architect and engineers to allow them to coordinate their designs further. It's quite common in industry for these processes to break down due to inaccurate exports and imports and really just different ways of doing things with Tecla and Revit. So this video is aiming to actually show you a method that will make sure that you can share data properly between Tecla and Revit. To do this, we're going to make use of IFC4. So IFC4 now has geolocation support. So this doesn't just use the latitude and longitude, but this is using proper coordinate systems. So it's understanding things like OSGB 1936 or WGS 84, and it's then making sure that we can accurately position buildings in the real world and also match things like project rotation or true north. So the general process here will be to export IFC4 from Tecla and Revit and make sure that we do that with the correct settings. So the next step here will actually be to look at the steps in the software itself. So let's start in AutoCAD. So you can see here that I've got my site already configured here. And I say AutoCAD, I'm actually using Civil 3D here, but you could just use AutoCAD if you wanted to. So we've got our four buildings footprints drawn up over here, and we've got the setting out point of each building clearly marked on the drawing. Now, in this example, because I am using Civil 3D, if I go to my drawing settings in here, you'll notice that we are actually using a proper coordinate system, OSGB 1936. And of course, that means that if I go to my geolocation tab and I put in my Esri imagery, for example, you can now see that in the context of, uh, in this case, London. Okay. Right, so now let's go into Revit and have a look at what we've got inside Revit. So I've modelled the first building, this is building A. And if I go to the site plan over here, you can see that I've got the same setting out point over here. It's set to zero, so there's no coordination here at the moment. All I've done is I've modelled the building from that internal origin exactly as I want to present it on a drawing. So, of course, if I go into the south elevation and we look at things like the levels and so forth, uh, these aren't real levels above sea. These are just the levels from the project itself. Now, what I want to do is now show you the site model. So this is what we term as the Revit building model. Okay, so we'll just close that down and we'll now go ahead and look at the site model. Now, the site model is geospatially coordinated. So I've set the project base point to match what I had in CAD. Um, what I've also done here is I've actually brought uh, across that civil 3D model in there. And when you do that, if I go to the Manage tab and I go to Locations in here, you'll notice that it does actually bring forward the GIS coordinate system as well. However, if I select this building here, you can see that it's building A. And currently, if I go to the shared site over here, what I want to do is just make sure that I'm going to publish that information back. So I'll do that. And now, of course, when I click Save, you can see here that we're now going to save back this current coordinate system into building A. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, and now what we'll do is we'll go back and look at building A again, just so you can see uh, what's changed. Okay, so we'll just ignore those links for a minute here, and we'll go into our site model over here, and picking this, you can now see that we've got the coordinates applied. So I've got the correct northing, easting, um, elevation, and also angle to true north. Consequently, if I go through and change the orientation from project north to true north, we can see the real rotation of that according to our site setting out. Okay, so what we can now do is export this to Tecla. So to do this, we'll go to the File tab, we'll go to Export, and select IFC. Looking in here, what we'll need to do is modify the setup, and what we're going to do here is begin by using IFC 4x3 setup. Now in here, you can't modify these standard setups, what you'll need to do is make a copy or duplication of this. So in here, I'll just call this one IFC 4, Export to Tecla. So that's the name I'm going to give the um, export setup. 
Looking into the general tab now, we can just ensure that we are using IFC4, in this case 4x3. That's absolutely fine. The facility type in this example is going to be a building. If I then go to my additional content tab, I want to ensure here that I'm only exporting the elements that are visible inside the view. Again, that will be down to personal choice. Once again here, we could obviously configure the property sets, the level of detail that we want to push this out to and so forth. But the important bit here for this particular video is the geographic reference tab. So in here, you can see that we are using the actual site, which is building A. The coordinate base is going to be from the project base point, And you can now see that it gets the easting, northing, elevation and angle. However, it doesn't really understand the um, EPSG code in here. So 27700 over there. You can now see it's pull, uh, pulled up the OSGB 1936 coordinate system. As another example, I could override this and go ahead and type in 2157 over here. And now you can see it's pulled up the ITM, which is the Irish Transverse Mercator. So, you know, we can put in whatever EPSG code that we want to use here. Like we said, in our case, we are using um, OSGB 1936, so that's 27700. So with all of that configured, what we can then do is export this out so we can actually use that and utilise that at um, later points or in other projects. But at the minute, um, that will be fine for me, so I'll click OK. And now I'll go ahead and export this out. So it's going to be called Building O, that's fine, and we'll click on Export. OK, so that's now done. Let's now go into Tecla Structures. So here we are inside Tecla Structures. I've got a completely new model set up here. And first thing we're going to want to do is go to the File tab here and go to Project Properties. In Project Properties, I want to go ahead and configure some base points. In the Base Point dialog, we can begin by giving this a name. So in here, we'll say Export um, to Revit. We can give this a description over here. So this is going to be uh, Building A. And in fact, actually what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change the name to Building A as well. So it makes a bit more sense. The coordinate system is OSGB 1936. We can now enter our coordinates. So I'm just going to copy and paste these out of Revit. We have to be mindful that these are in millimetres and not metres. So if we are coming from Civil 3D or AutoCAD, we'll now need to multiply these values by 1,000 to get them from metres into millimetres. But in this case, these have come from Revit, so they're already in millimetres. OK, so we now have the elevation pasted in. The next thing we need is the rotation. Now, I can get this from Revit. OK, so we can select this and we can now see the angle to true north. Um, is here. So I'm just going to make a copy of that and we'll jump back into Tecla. Okay, and of course we can put that in here. Now we do want to make sure that we are creating a project base point inside here and then we can click save and modify that. So now we can actually set building A as our origin and we can now see that in the model. Let's now begin by importing the IFC file from Revit. So to do this, we'll go ahead and click on Reference Model. We'll go to Add Model. We'll browse. Okay, and here we can pick Building A. Looking at this, we want to make sure that we are locating this by the base point that we've just configured in here. And of course, we can then add that model. Okay, we'll expand the uh, workspace inside here with the work area. And we can now see our model. Of course, if we want to check this, we can actually go up here to the Inquire Objects. We can go to Point Coordinates, and here we could actually zoom up on the building corners and pick each coordinate point in here, and we can just confirm that these are the same as Revit, so we have got the right setting out. Okay, so what we'll now do is we'll actually add some elements inside Tecla. So I'm going to go to the Steel tab, click on Beam over here, and we'll model some of these beams in. So let's zoom up on this. Okay, and we'll get some basic elements just modeled in, just so we've got something to export back into Revit. Okay. Okay, so we'll just get a couple of rafters in there. And I'll do the same on the back end of the structure as well, so we can see it's all going to work as expected. Okay, so we'll get that one in there. Okay, and we'll also get another one over here. 
Okay, okay. So there are those rafters actually now modelled in. So in this example, I'm just going to switch off now the background model over there, or the reference model. Okay, and what we now want to do is export this out to Revit. So when we do this, we've got two use cases. When we export it, we could export it to the Revit building model, or we could export it to the Revit site model. Okay, each of these have different elevations. The site model is from the sea level, and the building model is from zero. Right, so to do that, we can go to our file tab again. We can go into our base points over here. And in this example here, I can create a duplicate one. So in here, we'll call this one building A. Okay, and we'll call this one um, Revit model. Okay, so not the site. Okay, again, I could put in here description building A for actual model. So not the site. And the only thing I need to do here is just make sure that the elevation in this case is set to zero. Everything else stays the same. This is again going to be a project base point and I can modify that and click close. So now going back into the IFC export, let's do that again. So we'll go to IFC4. Of course, I now need to give this a name. So up here we'll call this one uh, rafters for building. Okay. I've got my location by, and that wants to now be, of course, building a Revit model. We'll just grab all of the elements that are coming out of this. The export type, of course, does have to be IFC4. The base point export is now going to be IFC site. Okay, and we just need to click on export. Okay, so that's now done. So what we'll do is we'll go back into our Revit model. Here we are. And we can now bring that IFC in. So to do that, we go to the Insert tab, Link IFC. Um, that's the one there that we've just created. So we'll click on Open. Okay, and it's obviously now Revit will render out a RVT project from the IFC file. And we can now see they've landed in exactly the right spot. So let's just have a look at this if we want to make some changes. So I'll go back into Tecla. In here, we'll now add some additional elements in just so we can see what would happen if uh, there's a steelwork change or a design change somewhere. Okay, so we'll create an element down there and we'll create another element over the back here as well. Okay, something like that will be fine. Right, so what I'll do is I'll now go ahead and export that again. So it's IFC4. Okay. Again, we can save these as name setups actually, so that's probably quite a, a good thing to actually do. Um, so in this case, I'll leave that as V2 because it is a different uh, rendition of the IFC file. Once again, you've got to make sure you use the right location in here. We'll use all objects. Uh, we're going out as IFC4, and again, we want to be using site, and we'll export. Okay, so that's now done. So going back into the Revit model now, First thing we want to do is go into our Manage Links dialog box. We can now see these models in here. Let me just remove the old one. Okay, that, that was from a previous example. So here we'll go ahead and reload from. We can go and pick our V2 file in there. Okay, and that's now going to obviously update the um, RVT model. And you'll see in a minute we have the updated still work. There we are. We can now see that's nicely updated. Now let's just take care of the other example of the site model. So we'll close this building down. Okay. And we'll now open up the actual site itself. So of course this one is now positioned from sea level. Okay. So what does that actually mean? Well, typically in here I could bring forward all of my drainage design, terrain, you know, and all sorts of other elements that make up the site itself. And of course you can see this is elevated. So now going back into Tecla, okay, what we'll do here is we'll do an export now for the site itself. So that's going to simply now be building A inside here. Everything else now stays the same, but I'm just going to have V2 site, so I, so I know it's for the site model over here. Everything else is, is correct in here, and we'll export. Okay. Let's now go back into Revit. Okay, so finally in here, we can go to the Insert tab, Link IFC. 
And in this example, we actually want um, the V2 site uh, to be utilized now. And we can click open. Okay, again, it's going to render out an RVT in the background and then link that through into the site model. And you can see it's landed perfectly. So there we are. You can now see the full process of geospatially referencing elements from Revit into Tecla structures and also from Tecla structures back into Revit. Hope that's been useful and speak to you soon.